Schuyler, thanks for being with us today. Fascinating stuff. For those of us who are not a trained architect, designer, or computer scientist, what exactly is 4D printing? Yeah, so the idea is that you take 3D printing and you add the element of time. So 3D prints something that transforms over time. It's essentially like printing a robot, but no wires, motors, batteries, or printing smart materials that can transform themselves, sense, actuate, reconfigure over time. So how do you believe that technology, and specifically self-assembly, will affect commercial real estate in the next five years? There's probably a few ways. Um, one way is that materials that can transform themselves can um, be integrated in our daily lives, you know, everywhere from clothing to building materials to uh, ways we react to sunlight, temperature, moisture, et cetera. So I think that that can change how we experience the built environment, um, how sustainable our built environment is, how it adapts to us, how our lives adapt to both the collaboration with the materials and energy. I think it also can change how we build, how we literally make our buildings and infrastructure and all the things around us. And so thinking about new ways to have smarter materials that assemble themselves, have materials and machines that collaborate together to make more efficient or more um, performance-driven construction processes, I think it can really radically change how we build and how we interface with that physical world. And the amount of time it takes to build. Yeah, certainly. It could be faster, for example, or we could build in more efficient ways. So even if it takes the same amount of time, maybe it's less energy intensive or it's safer, or we can build things that we can't build today or in conditions we can't build today. Sure. And one of our greatest challenges in the building and construction industry is labor and the cost of labor. And it would eliminate that as well, I would guess. I don't know or if it's like it. eliminate uh, human labor. We really think about it more as like human collaborations with materials. So we're not trying to say like, oh, uh, we won't have any construction workers or we won't have any factory workers because really it's about enabling materials to do things that materials are great at, enabling humans to do things that we're good at, and enabling robots to do good things you know, that they're great at. You know, robots are, uh, they don't get tired, they're really precise, et cetera. Humans are creative. Uh, they can instinctively like collaborate, change perspectives, think of different scenarios, adapt, uh, reprogram, adjust. Materials are great at sensing the physical environment. Materials occupy this world and can sense and react to things that we don't sense or react to. And so we can make these active materials collaborate with humans and robots. You're an inventor, which means you innovate, you create, you test, you retest, uh, you either fail or succeed. So how many times have you failed and how many times have you succeeded? We fail just about every day. Um, I mean, most of research is about failure. And realistically, you want to promote failure because if you fail, if you think it's going to do something and it does something different, it's actually a success because it did something surprising. You learned something. If it does exactly what you thought every single time, you haven't learned anything. Um, it's frustrating when you fail. You know, you don't want to have things all the time, you know, not working. And so that's, that's just kind of our typical operation is like how do we keep going and explore and test and if something surprising happens go after that and like learn from it what can you learn from failure and how do you utilize that to be more and more successful or surprisingly successful in the future and and we're often looking for that element of surprise like what could we do that is the opposite of what you would expect to happen and can we like really go for that is there something that motivates you or keeps you inspired after failing a number of times? What is it that motivates you to keep going? You know, there's this spectrum that we think about um, the radical to the relevant. And sometimes our projects are like super, super radical, but kind of useless, or you can't understand why they would be useful. They're just really surprising, strange, funny, playful. Uh, inspiring and I'm I'm really excited about that and then the relevant is like what could we do on any given day that would just be like the most important thing for this industry for ourselves for humanity like most important problems sometimes they're really boring but really important I'm also interested the best is when they combine like when it's radical and relevant you know we have a lot of projects there on either end of the spectrum and there's a few of them that like really hit the nail on both of those so, you know, those kind of things, big ideas and important problems are just what drive us and what inspire us every day. What innovation or creation would you say that you're most proud of? 
you know, the recent project, the Maldives project that I was talking about is maybe the one I'm most inspired by. So the Maldives project is a, a collaboration with a group in the Maldives trying to take our self-assembly, self-organization work and utilize that uh, to solve some of the problems they have in terms of sea level rise. Basically, we want to promote sand to self-organize and accumulate so that we can grow islands over time. Even if sea levels are rising, the islands get, can get bigger or coastal regions like beaches can grow or we can build new land. Simply by utilizing wave energy, the sand can accumulate on its own. It's a really crazy idea. It's a totally radical perspective. It's a totally important global problem right now, especially for island nations that could go underwater or could be destroyed by the next tsunami. Uh, any coastal regions affected by this. So if we can come up with this crazy scenario and find a way for this to work, I think it could be super important, but it's inspiring, it's playful, it's fun, it, it's exciting. It's like all the things that we want to do. Um, it's a long road and that is definitely challenging. You know, can uh, funders and the media and public opinion like sustain a long-term effort that is gonna take a lot of trial, a lot of failure, figure out how can we make this work over many, many years. Um, but if we can do it, it's like exactly the nexus of the radical and the relevant. To me, that's like the most inspiring project we could work on. And working in the Maldives, that's not a bad gig. Yeah, totally. Especially in Boston winters, it's yeah. pretty awesome. Good escape. All right. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, sure. It was a pleasure.